Hey there, my name is Chris Acton with Acton Creative, and this is a handwoven experience, episode 125. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about managing two wefts. So let's make sure we're all on the same page. As you are working on your project, you know that these are your warp yarns going this direction, and these are your weft yarns going this direction, right? So once you get into weaving a little bit, hopefully you'll start to play with having more than one weft in your project. You can tell here I am working with two different colors, but you can work with two completely different fibers, uh, colors, scale. There's all kinds of options here. So once you get to this point, it's like a whole new world opens up and it is so much fun. And I definitely hope that you explore that sometime soon. But when you get there, let's talk about some things to watch out for as you are constantly trying to manage two different shuttles in your project. So let's talk about the first kind of thing to watch for. So as you can see with my little repeat here, it's time for me to pull up this kind of green, I'm almost out, my green shuttle here. So let's talk about first of all, what we're watching for. So um, per my pattern, I have four picks. A, picks. a pick is one throw of the shuttle. I have four picks of a plain weave. So let's do that really quick just so you can kind of see what we're watching for. So I'm just going to ignore the red for now so I can kind of show you what we're watching for. Okay, so this is one. This is two. Let me move that out of the way. Okay. This is three. And this is four. Okay, now let's see what we have here. Oh, <laughs> like I said, I'm almost out of my weft. I didn't plan that very well, did I? Okay, so so look with me here. So do you see um our red? Our red is now four picks back. And when it's time for the red to come back into the pattern, it's gonna have to jump this distance then to go in next. Does, do you see that? And, and in this case, it's only maybe like a half inch. So it's not that far, but this is where kind of personal preference comes in. If you wanna make sure that all your yarns stay nice and tight, you don't have any loops on the edges of your fabric, there's another way that we can kind of watch for that so that we don't have yarns kind of looping over each other on the edge of the fabric. Now, as I said before, this is kind of personal preference. If that's not gonna bother you or the application of the fabric is such that it doesn't matter, don't even sweat it. However, if you wanna make sure that your edges are nice and tight, you don't have those loops, let's talk about your options here. So I'm gonna unweave for just a moment. Okay, let's see, take that back out. By the way, I need you to put on your thinking caps and come up with a good word for unweaving. We've been racking our brains for a while. We don't know what that is yet. So I know the knitters have a good word for unweaving, but weavers don't yet. So give me some ideas, would you? Okay, let's see. One, two, we'll pull this back out and I'll show you kind of how to manage that. Let me wind this on. I'm not worrying too much about it being graceful since it's just for demonstration, but um, all right, okay. So we're back to where we were when we started the video. So let's talk about then how to kind of catch, we'll call it, how to catch your other color as you're weaving forward. Okay, so I know that this is my first pick and my green is gonna go in here. So here's what I'm gonna watch for then. I want basically my two colors here to just kind of continuously wrap around each other. That's really what I'm watching for. And there's no exact science to this. It's just a matter of kind of um, uh, finding the best way to catch it. So see how my, my red is just kind of, uh, kind of looping up there? I am just gonna simply take my green and wrap it around like this. So see here my edge, it just kind of catches it. Just, just, just like that, all right? Now, come in the other direction, no problem, because there's no other weft yarn on that side. Back to us. Okay. So now, see my red still hanging out right there? See it? So in this case, depending on kind of up or down, sometimes the yarns will kind of move up or down per the uh, fabric. 
there's no right or wrong there, but you do want to make sure that you kind of catch it. So I am going to take my shuttle and I'm going to wrap around the, uh, the red weft there so that I can catch it again. So see my edge here, my red then is going to be tucked in right next to the fabric, just like that. So that is kind of the goal is it that we're kind of um, limiting the size of the little loops on the side of our fabric. Okay, so come back the other way. We are golden. All right, now one of the things that I wanna mention is that per my pattern, it's time for my red to come back in. So there are times that, depending on how you even place your shuttles on the side of your fabric, that that can even do the trick. So I know at this point that when I pick up my red shuttle, the way it's positioned by the green, it's just gonna wrap right around it. So I'm just gonna come around like this, and I know now that my green is gonna be tucked in next to the fabric there. And that's kind of what you're watching for. You just wanna kind of constantly be paying attention to the little loops on the side of your fabric. And like I said, there's no exact science to it, but it is just a matter of being aware of where your shuttles are and how your little weft yarns are kind of flirting with each other on the edge of the fabric. So that's just a little nugget for you to kind of watch for once you enter the arena of playing with more than one weft. You can do it. You'll figure out your own rhythm too. So uh, play with, sometimes you can just kind of position your shuttle so when you pick up the ones closest to you, it automatically wraps around. So watch for that as you're uh, weaving your next multi-weft fabric. I hope you have fun with it. Okay, you guys, have a great week. Happy, happy weaving. <laughs>